Welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. This is an Estes Alpha and it's a very common model rocket. This is also a model rocket. This is my seven and a half inch, two third scale Atlantic Research Corporation Iris sounding rocket. It's all fiberglass, seven and a half inches in diameter, 12 feet tall and some, and uh, it's finally getting to fly for the first time. I started building this rocket when I was about 17, so we're coming up on 10 years. We've got some work to do, but let me uh, let me give you some specs really quick. If you've ever flown an Estes rocket, you'll know the little cardboard rocket motors you fly, A's, B's, and C's. The Iris is flying on an N motor. And if this impresses you, this is a K motor case. This is an N motor case. This is an Aerotech 9815 360 motor case. It's home to a few different N motors. The one I've chosen for the old Iris is the N2220 Dark Matter. It's, I believe, the biggest sparky motor you can buy right now. No, that's not true. CTI makes an O. It's the biggest sparky motor I can afford and only just barely. That rocket with this motor in it will probably weigh just under 100 pounds and it is still supposed to go 8,500 feet, which is pretty insane. But before we can do that, we have some stuff we need to do to get it ready. It needs a motor adapter made because this rocket has a six inch motor mount in case I ever run into somebody who wants to make me an O motor. There actually was plans for an O motor when I was like 17, but those fell apart. So it's got a six inch motor mount. I have to make a 98 millimeter adapter so we can fly this end motor case. It needs electronics and uh, a bunch of other stuff sorted out. That is what we're going to be working on today. The first thing I ran into was that for some reason when I was 17, instead of buying a fiberglass coupler for it, I bought a Bluetooth one trying to save money and the coupler was way too loose. So last night I wrapped it in carbon fiber and you can see the footage right here. I did it last night because I wanted it to be done for today, but you can actually see it worked out pretty well. Fits in there pretty good, and that's really all we needed. But uh, yeah, this is a big old rocket, and uh, we're gonna fly it. So let's uh, ooh, zip. Ow, get to work, huh? With the coupler done and out of the way, the first step was to start assembling my 98 millimeter motor adapter. Now I'm using Lock Precision 98 millimeter motor tubing and their seven and a half inch rings happens to fit very nicely in my fiberglass tubing. So that was a very easy solution for me here. Since the rocket has a six inch motor mount, I designed it with a half an inch of clearance in the back so that I could make an adapter to fly anything that'll safely lift it off the ground. In this case, we're using a 98 millimeter motor tube to accommodate the 98 millimeter case. It's assembled with standard Bob Smith epoxy and uh, I had Scott Binder from SBR Rocketry make me some custom size rings to fit around this tube and go inside my six inch motor tube. Next, I took my cured carbon fiber wrapped coupler and measured out half of it, inserted it into the body tube and then used a tape measure to measure two and four inches up onto the airframe. That way I could drill holes and fit the rivets that are going to be holding the airframe together. If you're new to rocketry, this step may seem a little confusing to you considering generally you want things to come apart so the parachute can come out, but the nose cone comes off on the upper section so we're fighting our best here to keep this part of the airframe attached to the coupler. It'll make a lot more sense when you see the ground test videos and get a chance to see how exactly the rocket's going to break apart from my dual deployment system. Using advanced eyeball technology, I found exactly what is undoubtedly the perfect center of each of the electronics bay bulk plates and marked where I was going to drill the holes for my 3 8 inch all thread that's going to be the assembly holding my electronics bay together. 
After which I stepped outside and drilled some 3 8 inch holes in each one of these fiberglass bolt plates being sure to cover the spider web beneath it with plenty of fiberglass shavings that I'd rather not have in the carpet. With the holes drilled it's simply a matter of lining everything up and getting the all thread run through the coupler and into the bulk plates where I put it together with a bunch of 3 8 hardware and locking washers because it's such a big rocket I don't want to risk things rattling and coming apart. Now obviously the last thing I would want to happen with this flight is for the ejection charge to kick my motor adapter and my very expensive motor case out the back for me to never see it again and it be buried deep in the Bonneville salt flats. So I measured out roughly half of the centering ring that was already in the rocket which doesn't offer a lot of real estate considering it's a 6 inch motor mount in a 7.5 inch rocket. Once I figured it out I drilled some pilot holes and epoxied in some barrel nuts. This allows me to bolt the adapter in with machine screws and hopefully keep it inside the rocket. This was one of the scarier moments in the build. If you care to look up the cost of a 7.5 inch fiberglass tube, please do so and then realize that I'm drilling 3 8 inch holes in them to fit these amazing rail buttons you can get from Wildman. They're 15 15 rail buttons and they have a rubber collar that automatically tightens against the inside of the tube as you tighten it into the rocket. That way you don't have to have any wood or anything backing it. It's uh, very sturdy and actually quite nice. I like them a lot. With the holes drilled for the adapter and everything set in stone, I decided to finish up the whole project here by sanding the rest of the tube, covering the bottom ring with epoxy, and then pushing that other ring down on top of it and clamping it all together so that I have a much sturdier thrust plate, if you will. I still think I might put a layer of fiberglass cloth on the outside of this, plus it's getting a 98mm Aeropack retainer, so it should be plenty stout. Next on the dock, it was to install the three custom centering rings that Scott Binder made for me just to fit my 6 inch motor mount. After I got them tacked into place with some Bob Smith 30 minute epoxy and they dried efficiently, my dad did some big fillets on them for me while I was gone having some business to take care of that involved buying yet another old beat Volvo. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I know you can't see the whole thing but at least let me turn it so you can see the decals. 51.6 pounds loaded with all the recovery gear and the electronics bay 90% done with the motor adapter in there which means my original dream of flying this on an M2200 Skidmark is still within the realm of safety. Finding an M2200 that's going to be interesting. But if we can find one, I was really worried it was going to be too heavy for him. That also tells me is this thing's going to scoot with the N2220 in it. There's a lot of motor. It's a big rocket, but that's ends, ends are... Uh, a whole new level I've never delved into before. So, um, all we gotta do is finish the electronic space situation. I'm gonna use the same electronic sled out of the five inch, just gonna adapt it so that we can slam it in the old iris here, hot swap them around. I do that with a few different rockets. And uh, yeah, we gotta attach all the shock recovery stuff, um, drill some port holes for the altimeter, for the altimeters, because they read off barometers, so they need the air pressure inside there and build the motor, but after that, it's ready to go, which is pretty nuts. So join us next time when we do some ground testing, dial in how much black powder we're gonna need to separate this big boy. All right, I'm back in the garage so I can uh, give you guys a little more, no voiceover this time, I'll just explain what I'm doing. You can't see down there very well, but that is the inside of the nose cone. Uh, back in the days before, you and your kids got your fancy two-piece nose cones with the filament wound coupler you can turn into electronics bay. We were stuck with these one-piece gel coat nose cones that you had to figure out something for the shoulder. So, that's what I'm going to do. I can, you see I put a piece of 3 inch all thread in there. Um, hold it up there. Good lord. You gotta be careful with that because the tips are just gel coat. Somebody already broke the tip off of mine. I just put a good size hole in there, but whatever. That's going at the bottom. We're just going to throw a good amount of epoxy in there and uh, seat that and use my little bulk plate to center it. We're gonna use the West Systems for this application. 
fancy epoxy. I think two pumps ought to be enough. I need to get new pumps. This one on the hardener sucks. We might have to do more than two pumps actually. Let's see here. The nice thing about this rock is I don't particularly care about making things too heavy. It's already a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be and some epoxy is not going to be the game changer there. Just give you guys an idea how deep that's going. We're coming up to about here. So that'll be enough. I'm just going to real quickly throw a couple holes in there. We're going to let that epoxy dry overnight and this bulk plate's going to keep that all thread nice and straight. And then once it's dry, we can go ahead and thread on a bolt there. And uh, that U-bolt actually might be in the way. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, for now, that's going to be the end of this video. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this episode of Rocket Vlogs. The next one's going to be pretty exciting because we're going to ground test the iris and make black powder chargers and make uh, black powder charges bigger than I've ever used before. So that should be pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, we got a lot accomplished. We got a carbon wrap coupler done. Electronics made mostly assembled. Just need to put the electronics from the five inch Punisher in it. We got rail buttons on. Uh, we got full plate in the nose cone. We got the adapter built and uh, finished. It's got two rings on the bottom now. I'm sure you guys already saw. But uh, yeah, she's almost ready to roll. So the next video is going to be ground testing it. I need to uh, put U-bolts in the electronics bay bolt plates and then we'll get the shock cord run and I need to get a uh, Nomex, I think there's a big Nomex protector in this. And then after that, the next video is building ourselves uh, Aerotech N2220 Dark Matter. So that will be exciting, my first 98 millimeter motor. If you aren't subscribed, please make sure you are. Hit the subscribe button. There's also a little bell that does the notification stuff. I appreciate it very much. Um, these rockets aren't cheap. Traveling to Utah for LDRS isn't going to be cheap. Traveling to Oregon wasn't cheap. So if you want to check out rocketvlogs.com, I have t-shirts and stuff for sale. And I would appreciate your help greatly. For now, we'll see you guys in the next video.